Good evening, my name is Asad Khan and you're watching the Ambassador of Peace show on Next TV. It is always a pleasure to be with you all and, and especially when we have a dynamic guest who came all the way from Richmond and, and we are very happy that she's joining us today. Her name is Fazia Ishtiaq Fatima. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Thank you. Fazia, have you watched the show before? Of course. So what was the experience? What did you learn about from this show, what we do? I like to watch people and people's inspiring stories and your show is all about encouraging people for their for their social work, for their activities they do in their communities and uh, I like all of that. All right. So you recognize from UPF uh, for Ambassador of Peace for your philanthropic work mm -hmm. and this is also an Ambassador of Peace show. So what do you think? What it's an honor. It is an honor, definitely. It is an honor. And we are very happy that you realize that. Thank you. You are a founder of Fatima Foundation. When did you realize that this is something you want to start that? Well, I have been involved in philanthropic work and social activism uh, for past uh, 20 years. I see. Um, in different capacities. Uh, in the last couple of years, I realized that my daughters, I have uh, two daughters, okay. and they are awesome. growing up, and I want them to be involved I see. In, uh, in giving back to community. I see. Um, they both are students, and yet they are very interested in my social work and social activism activities. So this, is the, this was the perfect opportunity for me to bring them together and work uh, for something I have been doing for a long time, but now they, are, they have also joined me in my uh, own NGO. I see. So when you say you've been doing this for a long time, when did you start this uh, social work activities? Uh, I came to America, uh -huh. 95. Okay. And uh, I had the opportunity to advance my studies Okay. And that's what I did. I was also uh, making family. Okay. I had children. Um, 2001 was the time where uh, when my younger one uh, was about three, three and a half years old, she started preschool. Right. And I started volunteering I see. for refugee settlement services. I see. Uh, when Virginia, Roanoke, Virginia, where I was living, okay. accepted refugees from different part of the world, I was um, I was called in I see. Uh, as a translator, as a person who can provide some services to those uh, okay. refugees. So that was my first experience. Okay, uh, working with people who had nothing. I see. And uh, childrens were small. I was also working on my studies. Um, but I still had some energy and some time, which I really wanted to give back to community. I see. And since then, I have been working uh, with different organizations, some of them Rescue Mission, Feed Bank of America, Homeless Women and Children's Shelter, and a uh, couple of others. I, I so pretty much all your journey is related to the work, social work? Not really. Nice. In my understanding, um, the work has two different types okay. or categories. Okay. One is sales-related work. Okay. The second one is service-related work. Although I was involved in sales-related jobs mm -hmm. or positions throughout my mm -hmm. journey, and I had different professional roles from business owner to banker to teacher to um, real estate professional, at the same time, I was also receiving opportunities to keep working for my passion, for my true calling. And that was helping people. I see. People who have difficulty understanding English, people who are new to the system in this I country. See. And I felt very connected to them. I see. I felt this is my moral responsibility to help them who cannot help themselves at that time. I, see. I mean, it is. We all agree on one thing that we cannot change this world, but we can change someone's world. So that was your mission to changing people's life. Is that correct to say that? Absolutely. Okay. 
Let's talk about your, when you say social work, could you elaborate that? What is the, exactly the social work is? Social work is a vast um, platform. Okay. And as a social worker, anyone can help people who are elderly, people who are not belong to mainstream, okay. people who are unprivileged, people who are facing hardships, um, women, children, people with disabilities. Okay. So it's a it's a huge platform. So is that, it has like different categories as well, or just? It does. Okay. Yes. When uh, social work uh, start advancing, at that time, uh, it can divide into three different uh, categories. Okay. One micro social work, which is when a social worker is working with one person. I see. At a time. Okay. Number two is mezzo social work, which mezzo. is okay. social worker working with a family. I see. Or a group of people. Okay. Certain group of people, like teenagers. And there, then comes the uh, the last but not least that is macro social work. Okay. And that uh, particular social work specialization is into when a social worker is interested into working with organization, larger group of people. I see. And that is where my interest lies. I see. I want to work with people in larger quantity. Okay. So are you affiliated with any big organization right now? Yes, I am. Okay. I am currently working with uh, Commonwealth Catholic Charities. Okay. And their mission uh, pretty much aligns what I believe, that I helping see. people regardless of their race, uh, ethnicity, uh, religious affiliation, gender orientation. So just quit the differences and start embracing humans as humans, people Perfect. as people. People as people. So. I mean, during this journey, have you had any chance to work as a professional doing anything like anything in the sales or anything uh, besides that social work? Uh, yes, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh -huh. that when I first came to United States, uh -huh. I had the opportunity to advance my education. I see. I had a bachelor's degree from Karachi University, Pakistan. I see. And then I continued my studies here. Okay. Um, at the end, I was also working as a social worker for community, for community people, okay. um, I would say as a non-professional social worker, okay. but I was still helping people. I see. That brings me a lot of peace. I see. And I do it regardless, without looking for any rewards. Was there any inspiration from someone or anything that you that you that was motivated you to continue this kind of work? Absolutely. The first and foremost uh, inspiration is uh -huh. my mother. Your mother, okay. and she is mashallah alive. Okay. I was raised by a single parent. Okay. And throughout my growing years, I saw my mother working hard. Definitely. After losing her spouse. Um, struggled a lot financially and dealt with the trauma, dealt with all these young children mm. and still always helped us to look forward and look out of the box. I see. She was also very encouraging to help people to learn, to read, to write. I see. She was also providing meals for whatever she has. I see. So I guess I had that experience at a very early age Okay. And that has shaped me to keep thinking along those lines. I see. And that is the reason that you started this Fatma Foundation? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is the mission of Fatma Foundation? Fatma Foundation is a charity or you said welfare organization, a okay. non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. And the main purpose of this foundation is to support, educate, and okay. empower women, girls, at any capacity, at all walks of life. Okay. So, you, have you ever asked yourself that, why social work? Uh, to be honest with you, no. 
No. But I have been asked this question. But I seen that you're talking about just social work in every, uh, uh, I mean, every walk of life year that you had in, 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 in like 20 plus years. Education and coming from Pakistan, and you still continue to doing, but what is your, I mean, why social work? Is that paid well? It, uh, it pays well, uh, not in terms of any monetary contribution. I see. Uh, but it brings me a lot of satisfaction. I see. I feel connected to the people. I feel this is my true calling. I see. I feel this is my moral responsibility. I am fortunate with good health. I see. And privileged to belong to an educated family. I have been receiving multiple opportunities to keep learning academically, professionally, socially, emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I feel that this is my moral responsibility to hold hand and uplift people nice. who cannot help themselves. Would you be comfortable calling yourself feminist? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I am honored to be called as a feminist. <laughs> when I elaborate about that? Feminism is a social movement okay. that started uh, in 1800. I see. Essentially advocated for, um, for gender equality, for men and women both. And then over the period of time, several other shoes started adding into it, and this movement became stronger and stronger. It is like, a, just like any other social movement that only help people and only fight for people's right. So it doesn't matter, is, is, does it matter gen, gender at all, that men, women, or kids, or? No, to be honest with you, no. Okay. Apparently, apparently, uh, the name sounds like if it is only for the female. For, for the females. Right. But the matter of truth is, if the females are pushed behind, if they are getting paid less, for the same position okay. in an organization as a professional role mm -hmm. and have same number of years as okay. education. Okay. And if they're getting paid less, yes, they will be fighting for their rights. I see. And people like me will mm -hmm. be helping them I see. to stand up for themselves and fight for their rights. Right. But it's not limited for women only. I see. Any in your, in your, for the last 20 years, have you had any kind of memory that you feel like that you did really good on, to help someone? Any from your past memory? Multiple times, uh -huh. uh, I did achieve the goal of okay. helping someone to take it to the point where right. she or he wanted to be. Right. And simultaneously, multiple times I wasn't able to complete the task I see. for a number of reasons. Okay. But my job is not to bring results. My I job see. is to hold the hands and let them let people walk freely I see. and let them choose freely to be a helper. So are there different levels in there? Like you and you start that helping someone, then you take him to the second level or third level then you hand it over to someone else to take you to the next level. Is that how it goes? Yes. Okay. That's true. It does work uh, at multiple levels. The first and f very important uh, aspect of uh, providing any help, any assistance mm -hmm. to a person is actually validating what okay. they are going through. I see. So emotionally, they are distorted. They okay. are tired. They are exhausted. Okay. So understanding and giving them that validation, yes, it is happening. Okay. And I'm here right. as an ear and listen to them. That is the first step. And then finding resources that where they, they can get more help okay. for their issues, for their needs, that is part of the social worker's job. I see. So are you looking for volunteers for your uh, foundation? Absolutely. Okay. It is a volunteer-based nonprofit organization. Okay. Fatma Foundation uh, is the name, and all volunteer help, monetary donations, and suggestions are welcome. I see. That's great. So how people can reach out to you, and we will provide the contact detail. And, and also, when your show goes live on social media, they will they can also reach out to you by your, 
the different ways. Um, let's talk about your personal interest. I think we talked too much about, <laughs> about your profession, your activities. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> let's talk about your personal interest. So let's, what, what, what do you do while you're not doing social work? I'm a very ordinary person. I am happy to be, um, to be at home. Okay. And I do gardening. Oh, that's good. I like horseback riding. Horseback riding. Reading is my all-time favorite. I see. And I am also interested in dancing. Wow. So let's talk about, I think we take the dancing as a whole ch new chapter. Let's talk about the reading. What kind of books do you read? I love reading autobiographies I see. of uh, people I'm inspired. Okay. Abdul Sattar Edhi, Mother Teresa, Nelson uh -huh. Mandela. I see and several others. Okay. I like to read motivational books. Okay. I like to analyze myself and keep finding ways where I can learn more. I'm a very learned person. I'm I always see. eager to learn new information. I see. Do you want to suggest any motivational speaker to our audience? Yes, please, please uh, read and watch uh, podcasts uh, of Dr. Brené Brown. Okay. Uh, she is amazing. She has okay. written four books. I, see. I have read all four of them. Every single one of them is full of inspiration. Wow. And she connects uh, to people, especially to women, mm -hmm. at a much wonderful level. I see. So dance, what kind of dancing do you do? I like all dances. I see. I love Bhangra. Oh, I yeah. am learning ballroom dancing <laughs> and Latin dances, cha-cha and salsa. I see. Um, and I just an, an absolute awe of what it brings to me energy-wise. I see. It's a great exercise. Uh -huh. It stimulates the brain. I see. It uh, keeps you fit. It keeps me very happy. Keep you very happy. And that's the most important thing. That's correct. Any, anything you would like to share as far as your I mean, social work with our audience that they, they can, what they can do, I mean, especially for the newcomers. Any tips you want to give it to them? I would encourage uh, young professionals to, um, to be involved in their communities. I would love to have them come over and volunteer at organizations like homeless shelters, food banks, thrift stores, and learn from the experiences. They are going to learn which they are not going to learn from the books. And it is going to, it is going to enlarge their heart, the understanding. And those will be the true experiences for their true growth. Perfect. And audience that you, anything you want to ask in the later on, you can definitely open the chat on the on either on Facebook or um, YouTube channel I think we learned definitely uh, a lot from Fazia what she has been done and uh, I believe she's a true ambassador of peace and um, we will keep this chat open in the future we will invite her again for new things that she had to her in all life and because she's a wonderful guest anything you want to add at the, at the end before we close this interview sure as I got the opportunity I will take this liberty and I will just request that uh, we all have been struggling emotionally uh, physically and psychologically with this pandemic COVID uh, what is my take-home from this pandemic is we can live with minimal furniture minimum amount of materialistic goods and stuff I'm practicing to live with fewer stuff, you can do that as well. Thank you very much, Fazia, for joining us, and thank you for the joining us. We'll see you with some other guest in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was definitely a great time.